So innovations are going to drive competitive advantage no matter what. That was an example of an engine created through nanotechnology that sits on the head of a pin. By the way, nanotechnology, I keep coming back to that because certainly in the packaging space, material science space, we could end up with a very different kind of architecture for packaging, material handling, and actually materials themselves that are made from packaging. When you start to think about it, I mean, if I look at 2015 in the logistics space alone, I could see walking through a warehouse where the packages actually talk to me actually let me know, well, you better get me on time to this customer. I got news for you, because we may be out of time. I'm I have perishable information. Or I, you know, the promise for delivery was sooner rather than this time. In other words, the ability to have a convergence of new kinds of chips, combining voice, GPS, new kinds of platforms integrated, and if you will, sputtered onto the materials themselves that are used for products inside of them to give them a certain kind of embedded intelligence, you're going to see this happen sooner rather than later, certainly in our lifetime. So these future engines of innovation, certainly nanotechnology, are going to be dramatic. Let's talk a little bit about nano. Certainly the areas that are top of mind are manufacturing of products. I said earlier it's basically a material science revolution. I can tell you as a futurist, every single time I've made a forecast about nanotechnology, by the way, unlike biotech, or well, let's say very similar to biotech, in closer in, closer in, that innovation occurs by the better part of five to eight years. So for instance, stem cells, uh, the ability to reprogram uh, adult cells to turn them into stem cells, uh, I thought that that would take at least the better part of five to six years. On the low end, it happened, of course, three, four months ago, not even that. Uh, nanotechnology, the ability to have products in the marketplace. This has defied our forecasts. We now have companies like Mercedes-Benz that are using nanotechnology on their 500 series for coatings. You now have 20 companies that have brought out products that are using nano-based technologies. But the big opportunities in nano, manufacturing, materials, certainly packaging, energy, communications, has not happened yet. But it will happen. And when it does, it'll make the internet seem small. Small. For instance, this is an example of a nano engine. An engine that was constructed out of carbon nanoballs, the, the, the Nobel and prize winner Smalley died this last year, but his vision was that we'd be able to create entirely new energy products, that we'd be able to create new kinds of medical products that would be embedded in us with embedded intelligence to be able to identify disease before it became a problem, there was a cancer or a dysfunction. It would have a diagnostic window inside of us, or early detection from the inside. But you know, to me, it's going to be a lot simpler. That's complex stuff to do. The ability to have more resilient, weatherproof, flexible, adaptable packaging for logistics, to me, it makes a lot of sense. This is just one example of nano engines. You're going to see a lot more. These new energy engines of creation, meaning that Nanotechnology is the only science, quite frankly, and it's all built on an IT platform, if you will, where you can start to create things that don't exist in nature, but elements exist in nature. Most of what we create, for all intents and purposes, is mimicked by materials or resources or elements in nature. With nanotechnology, you might create those things that actually self-assemble themselves. You might create those kinds of things that we can program in information to create a new, uh, if you will, coding or a new kind of functionality or a new kind of intelligence. And it might, for all intents and purposes, actually form itself with this intelligence. Now think about the implications for your business. What would be the advantage of having a self-assembling product? Well, at the National Science Foundation, we're looking at the better part of a trillion dollars generated and a lot of this, you know, you have big companies that are working on this material science revolution right now, different pieces of it. Um, certainly, companies, some of the companies may be even here today. 